Hey everybody, this is Steam from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. And it's it's kind of a small week. Um, not, not too crazy. Uh, but I wanted to, um, before I get started with the reviews, I wanted to talk about... Uh, Pulp Fiction, uh, my local comic shop in Long Beach, California, <clears throat> had a uh, Pride uh, celebration on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Uh, he had uh, four great guests. Uh, there was David uh, Boer, uh, Santa Grace, uh, Greg Lockhart, and Josh Trillo. Uh, it was really a fun night. Uh, there was uh, quite a good turnout uh, for, you know, this was Ryan's first Pride event. Um, a uh, lot of people showed up. It was really nice. Hopefully, uh, you were able to make it. If not, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do another one, uh, next year. It, it turned out really well. Uh, I was really happy. It was a little scared because it was kind of quiet in the beginning, but, uh, uh, the, 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 the guest, I had a really good time. They were really happy. And I wanted to kind of show off a few things that I, uh, I did get. Uh, hopefully I'll review these soon, but you know how that goes. It's, it's tough. I'm getting a little later on the, even the weekly reviews. Uh, I got, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Lockhart's, uh, graphic novel, uh, Lieber, Lieberstrasse. Uh, I picked that up and got hit signed by him. Uh, uh, I was able to get uh, David uh, Boer's adaption of Rain with uh, that he wrote. Uh, he adapted from Joe Hill's uh, story uh, with artwork by Zoe uh, Zoe Thur Thurgood. Uh, so I picked that up, got him to sign that, and uh, I had already bought this. I, I really I really need to get uh, reviews of some of these uh, DC. Uh, uh, graphic novels, but uh, the Superman uh, Harvest of Youth by uh, Sienna Grace. Um, he did a really nice little uh, little uh, drawing in there, and it was really nice. He signed it to me. I was really happy about that because I really, really love that book. Like I said, hopefully get a review. And he had these little little baby little postcards, but they're kind of prints, and he signed that. But here was the thing: uh, he he did some artwork. Now he had done this uh, Superman, which I really loved. Uh, because in the uh, the 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 Harvest of Youth book that he did, uh, he didn't get to draw Superman. He only drew Clark. But I really like his Superman. So after he did that, I said, Ah, uh, you know, Sienna, I really need a Clark. And so he did this really wonderful Clark uh, from from Harvest of Youth, and and I really uh, really happy about that. And uh, if you happen to um, uh, meet uh, Sienna at, at a convention or a gathering. Uh, definitely, he is. I mean, they were all super great. Uh, you know, Dave, Sienna, Greg, and Josh. It was just a really fun night. Uh, and uh, uh, like I said, if you catch Sienna, uh, get him to do uh, some artwork. He's really a great artist. Uh, and uh, it was a it was a fun night uh, all around. Uh, we had some new people uh, come to the store, which was really nice. It, good, solid turnout. wasn't wasn't Didn't get too crazy, but it was good and steady, which is really, really good. And uh, and uh, Ryan Ryan offered free beer, so that always helps. Uh, but but it was a good night, so I was very happy uh, with that. And everybody had a really good time. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, keep an eye on uh, Ryan is always doing events and stuff like that, having guests in and uh, it, it's really a great shop and he really, it's, it's a, he really cares about his customers. So that's important. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's get to the reviews. First up, we have Zatanna bring down the house. Number one, uh, written by Mariko Tamaki with artwork by Javier Rodriguez. Uh, so this is a black label book. So it takes place out of continuity. And what it is, is, uh, Zatanna, when she was younger, something happened where, uh, cause her father Zatara is, you know, a real, you know, can ha do magic and everything, real magic, not magic tricks. And so can Zatanna, but something happened in her childhood that went, something went wrong when she tried to use real magic. We don't know what has happened. But we know that there was an incident. So now she's working at a uh, crappy Las Vegas hotel casino, uh, just doing really uh, simple magic tricks and stuff like that. And uh, there's somebody that keeps showing up in the audience uh, for like every performance. And now obviously the show is free, but they keep showing up. And I, I really don't want to give anything away, but uh, th there's, there's something obviously that relates to that person and her past with the accident when she was a kid. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I really like this first issue. Uh, I'm really big fan of Tamaki. She, she's really a great writer. 
Um, if you haven't, if you haven't picked up Harley Quinn, Broken Glass, uh, that she did with Steve Pugh, that's really amazing, but she's a really good writer. And, uh, what really makes this book, you know, pop is, uh, Rodriguez's artwork. It's really fantastic. It's just, it, it, it fits the story so well. And he even colored it in himself. And, and that's the other thing I really enjoyed about, I mean, I love his artwork, but the, his color work on this book is really, really good. Uh, especially like, you know, there's the flashbacks to when, you know, she was a kid, uh, you know, the coloring slightly different and just the way he used the color to enhance the line work was just absolutely amazing. A great story, really wonderful artwork. I really dug this book a lot. This was, this was really a great book. Uh, I'm really excited to see, uh, where, where they take it, but, uh, this, this one's a must buy this week. It really is that good. Uh, definitely pick that up. Uh, next up, we have Giant Size Little Marvels, number one, written by Scotty Young, with artwork by Dax Gordine. Now, I believe that this was a, a digital first, because uh, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five stories. So there's Little Mar uh so there's Sorry Cap, Project Iron Way, uh, With the Stone, Ivy Dead, and Shame of Thrones. So there's four. Uh, so the first one, the, uh, the sorry cap is, uh, really, uh, you know, they're filming a movie and, uh, you know, they're basically, they're all little kids. That's, it's kind of like Marvel characters as peanuts and, you know, that's the basic premise. So cap is, you know, kind of like, you know, they're making a movie and then they go back to the clubhouse and, uh, you know, Cap is kind of like angry because he's, you know, the movie's not going well. It's a cute, they're all cute little stories. Uh, there's that one. And then the Project Iron Way is Tony Stark is having other Marvel characters build a new Iron Man suit for him. There's that one. And then the, uh, the, um, uh, the, oh, the, with this stone, I, the dead is that the collector has Groot and, rocket going out looking for the death stone and then the final one is uh, shame of thrones is all the villains getting together uh you know and of course victor von doom is like i'm the greatest i have a throne that's why and i i won't spoil the ending of that it's really cute these are really cute little stories uh i will say the one i, I mean they're definitely very scotty young the interesting thing was uh Gordine's artwork it's like he's really mimicking scotty young which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just, uh, it, it, it seemed odd. You know, it could be that Scotty was just too busy. Uh, but they're really cute, and it definitely falls in if you've seen uh, Scotty's Young covers, which there's usually at least one a month at Marvel. Um, it's definitely in that style. They're really cute little stories. It's a nice little all-ages book. Um, you know, I, is it a little pricey for the price? Sure. But, uh, it, they're fun little stories. I, I will say Gordine's art is really nice, even though it, it very much is like kind of Scotty Youngish. Uh, but it's, it, it does obviously fit the stories really well. And it, it's a good looking book. I, you know, it didn't blow me away, but I, I did chuckle a few times and it was really, it's really charming. It's, it's basically peanuts done as the Marvel universe. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a cute little book. It's, it's definitely, if you have, if you have kids, it's definitely worth picking up, but I, you know, I definitely enjoyed it too. Uh, it was just a fun little distraction. It's a pretty easy read. It's a pretty quick read, but, uh, overall it's a little charming, uh, book that is, uh, worth checking out. Uh, next up we have Rare Flavors, number six, written by Ram V with artwork by Philippe Andrade. So this is the final story. So I'm, I'm, trying to I would tra tab dance around because I don't want to give too much away but so what it is is that uh uh Ruben the 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 you know the really big guy who's kind of a god I guess has has disappeared he's left Mo Mo is now introducing the film that he made and really he really what this issue is about is Mo's backstory about how he how he learned uh you know cuz he had how he learned to to discover his past and how it helped him finish the film. Uh, the, the past being uh, he had issues with his mother. They were estranged and how food brought them together. And, you know, that that's, that's all I really want to say. I don't want to really give much more away, but it's really, it's a beautiful ending to the story. And it's really perfect because 
once again, Reuben was always kind of this mysterious, like almost God. Uh, he he loved food, but he also loved people because he was a bit of a cannibal. Uh, but it really it uh, all comes together in this issue, and it really makes sense of why Ru uh, Reuben picked Mo to do this film. Uh, and once again, that's all, I don't want to give anything more away, but it was absolutely just, it was really emotional, uh, finale and really beautiful, uh, just so well done. Um, and you know, this is the same team who did the many deaths of Layla star, uh, Ram V just knocked out of the park. This, this story was so good. And it, and then, you know, Andre's artwork just really just captured the emotions and even the food. The food looks gorgeous even in the book. Uh, it, it, this is really good. It, uh, it, it might, I know it's going to be tough to find the, the previous issues. I know they've announced a, a trade of it coming out in a few months. So definitely pick, uh, pick this book up. But uh, if you have been reading it, you're certainly not going to be uh, disappointed with this finale. It really just wrapped up really beautiful. Uh, so definitely another must buy this week. Uh, next up, we have Farrell's number four, written by Tony Fleece, with artwork by Trish Forstner and Tone Rodriguez. Uh, so what this is, so the indoor cats find the home where they were. And of course, you know, when they get there, so there's two things that are kind of going on. Uh, one of them turns on the TV. So you're kind of seeing the news reports of what is going on, how this like infectious, uh, r rabid disease has gotten out and it's affecting animals and stuff. So they're, they're thinking they're safe in the house, but then there's a mysterious thing in the basement. And I won't say what that is. Uh, and, and so once again, they're, they'll, they'll, they'll basically be on the run. I mean, the house, uh, isn't quite as safe as we, as they anticipated being. That's all I'll say on that. Um, I am liking this book. I'm just not quite, um, loving it. I think, uh, where I'm struggling just a tad, and I don't think this is a bad thing. It's, this is a more long form. Uh, Tony has said that this is going to be an ongoing series. So it's more kind of a longer and, and I think, what I was used to was like when he did Stray Dogs, where, you know, it was a mini series and it had a kind of a good middle beginning, middle and end where this one, I, I don't think he's dragging it out. It's just a longer form. So I think it's just one of those things I'm just having to like kind of lean into it a little bit. I mean, each issue is building nicely on the previous issue. It's just more of a long term story. Uh, arc, you know, so we'll kind of see, we'll kind of see where it goes. I am liking it. I think it's just like, I've got to let it more seep in and kind of see where he goes each issue. Um, Forrester and Rodriguez are really knocking. The, the artwork's really great and everything it has that cartoony look. Uh, it's like cartoon horror, you know, uh, but, but like I said, I think, you know, at this point we're, we're kind of starting to get to the middle of the story. So, you know, it's just one of those things where it's it's just a slow burn, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's it's sometimes you just have to like, OK, take a breath, let it just happen. So, well, that's what we'll keep doing with Farrell. But but I, I think it is going in a good direction. Uh, I think we just have to kind of see where that direction is going to end up at. Uh, next up, we have Gotcha Man number one, written by Colin Bunn with artwork by Chris Bati uh, Batista. So this is, uh, Gotcha Man is known over in the U.S. as G-Force, um, or Battle of the Planets, uh, that was brought over. And so it's, this is based on the Japanese, uh, animated series Gotcha Man. And so what it is, is, uh, uh, this issue is really f just full exposition. Uh, it, it sets up that we have the original G-Force that we all know and love. And then there's like a B-team that they're training. And then, of course... Uh, Lord uh, Casty uh, sends in this monster uh, that Phoenix Commander is is controlling, and you know they're destroying the town because they're you know it's it's like good guys versus bad guys, and the you know the villains want to take over the world. Uh, it's a pretty basic story. I mean, there's not uh, the 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 thing that's a little does this first issue does struggle a little bit. It really is very exposition heavy. Now there is good action, and you know Bun is setting up the characters so you know because not i think here's where it kind of struggles a little bit most people who might buy this book already kind of know who g-force is and but on the flip side bun is setting it up for people who don't know who uh g-force is 
So you kind of have a yin and yang on this whole thing where you're preaching to the choir who already know, but then if there is new readers, they're going to get to know kind of the situation, how it's set up. So that's that's where, you know, it's really tough to do exposition because you have to balance the two. You have to assume that there are going to be readers that kind of don't know these characters and stuff like that. And then you, for people that know the character is going to struggle a little bit because he's explaining everything. Now, this is not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that it's, it's a bit of a tough, tough, on this first issue because of the exposition that he needs to do for new readers. So, uh, but if you don't know who these characters are, the good news is that Bun has explained a lot of stuff along the way. I think really when we get to, we'll see where the second and third issue kind of land on this. Uh, you know, once we get kind of past the introduction stage of all the characters. Now, I will say uh, Batista's artwork is really nice. He really captures the uh, look, uh, you know, kind of the feel of the original, uh, you know, kind of anime look. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, overall, it's a nice looking book and everything. And I enjoyed it. I just once again, I know who they are. So the exposition was a little stumbling block for me, but it wasn't fatal uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But if, if you don't know who Gotcha Man is, the good news is that Bun has set it up for you. So you get to come into this universe. So um, I think it's worth checking out. Uh, depends on your level of, you know, like how well you know them. But I think if you don't know them, this is a good introduction to them. So uh, I think it's, once again, it's worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Anasi Boys number one with a story based on Neil Gaiman's uh, book. Uh, then the script is by Mark Bernandi. And then the artwork is by Sean Martinborough. Uh, so what this is, is, so Fat Charlie Nancy, uh, uh, he's, he's getting married, and so his, his girl, his, uh, bra, uh, his, uh, girl wants to have the father, his father at the wedding, because her father has passed away, uh, and she, she wants his father, but he has, but Charlie has this really bad relationship with his father. Uh, his father was kind of a... Uh, kind of a jerk, and what he find well, what he finds out is that his his father was actually the uh, spider god Anasi, hence the name of the the title. And so what it is is so he decides to go find his you know find his father because he hasn't talked to him in years, and then he finds out his father is dead. So not only was is his father dead, he was a god, and that uh, Charlie has a twin brother that he didn't know anything about. So that's the setup here in this first issue. Now, obviously, you're adapting uh, the original book. So uh, Bernini does a nice job on that. I was really interested. The only thing that was very weird about this is the last page just ended like it didn't say to be continued and then there's like ads and I'm like is that it you know not that I was disappointed I'm just like it just seemed like uh usually in a comic you're like to be continued I mean I, he left on a cliffhanger it's so in a way this was like chapter one of of the book it could be more but I'm just saying it feels like a chapter one the problem is with the comic you have to wait 30 days for chapter two so you're not turning the page so uh to be continued might have been a, a bit of a help on that last page but other than that i did i did like it uh i i think the story is really interesting uh once again it's the first chapter so you're setting up the story uh martin burroughs art is is really nice and uh uh, the, the, I love how, uh, you know, like when his, his mom is, uh, uh, in the hospital and everything, the dad brings his band in to like cheer up and everything. Cause his, his dad was like really kind of a playboyish type, you know, what, hence he was a God. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see where this, this goes. I mean, Dark Horse has done a ton of these Neil, uh, game and adaptions, which is really nice to bring them into more of a visual, uh, you know, the comic form. And this one's actually good. I think, uh, if you're a fan of Neil Gaiman, it's, it's well worth checking out. Uh, next up we have the Batman, uh, Brave and the Bold, number 14. So there's five stories. There's Nightwing and Dead Man, uh, Dawn of the Road, Part 2, written by Tim Seeley, with artwork by Kelly Jones. Time Jerks, Part 2, written by Mark Russell, with artwork by John Mickle. Uh, the Flash, A Day in the Life, this is a one-off story, written by Kevin Scott, with uh, Travis Mercer doing artwork. Uh, the Invader, Part 2, written by Joshua Hale, Hale Falkoff, 
uh, with artwork by Lissandro uh, Esterin. And then the evidence, which is the Batman black and white story, uh, r the evidence remains written and drawn by Hayden Sherman. Wow, yeah, all, each issue always has five stories. So, uh, so uh, with Nightwing and Dead Man, so they're on, uh, they're they're looking for because uh, Stella was murdered, so they're on the look for Red Stash. So they they had you know they're on a train, they're heading to Ohio. Uh, to where this uh, kind of town where carnies kind of congregate. And so there's mysteries and they learn, uh, you know, they kind of learn about the stuff. They meet uh, uh, Stella's brother who is looking for answers. And then we also find out that there's kind of this dark side uh, where there's another ghost slash demon like Dead Man. And uh, so there's, there's that and he's able to actually hurt dead man so that's kind of like whoa that's that's pretty messed up uh once again it's the second part so it's it's continuing story i do like i do like how it's like this gothic horror in a circus story and then you know seely is definitely writing this for kelly jones and and uh his i i've always been a big fan of kelly jones artwork but i really love his dead man because he literally looks dead um and, you know, it's moving along quite nicely. Uh, time Jerks is... Uh, so, Booster has screwed up the time stream. Big surprise. Uh, where he has he has uh, changed the course of Earth where the, the asteroid did not destroy the dinosaurs. And it's now flipped where dinosaurs are ruling the Earth and humans have become extinct. And so, uh, hence, uh, hooking up with the Jurassic League, who would have thought that book would have ever came back, but Mark Russell figured it out. And so, this issue, Booster has to steal the time sphere to go back and fix time. And he tries, and it isn't quite working. So, we'll kind of see, uh, I think, the next issue where it concludes. But it's a fun story. Um you know, I love Russell's uh, story, you, you know, kind of flipping the extinction thing is really cool. Mickle's artwork's really nice. Uh, and that one's, that one's a lot of fun. That one's, that one's a real treat. The Flash Day in the Life is basically a day in a life where he helps out heroes, but he also just tries to have a normal life with Iris. Uh, it's a cute little story. Uh, Scott, you know, once again, it's a one and done story. He does a really nice job with a, you know, kind of eight-ish pages uh, you know, kind of a short story, and it just has a nice, good beginning, middle, and end. And uh, Mercer's artwork is really nice for that. Um, so that one, that was just a fun one and done, which is kind of nice to just have a single story that you can just say, oh, oh, okay, that's nice. Um, and then the invader continues the story of this alien, uh, has, a spacecraft has crashed. Uh, they're look, uh, Batman and Guy Gardner are looking for the alien. Uh, there's a lot of radiation, so Batman's wearing a bat suit, and uh, and so they're trying because the alien has uh, has has been injured, so they're they're trying to help him, but the alien doesn't quite understand. And then, of course, Guy is not as much help as you would think. Big surprise. Uh, I like this story, I really do. And uh, Esther uh, Esther uh, Esterin's. Uh, artwork is really nice. It's a really good looking book. Uh, Falkov, uh, I really like this story a lot. It's kind of a kind of a creepy kind of UFO story uh, with Batman and Guy Gardner, but I do like it, uh, and uh, and I like how it's going and how uh, Batman's in trouble at the end of the issue. So I don't know. Hopefully he'll get out of it. I'm sure he will. Uh, and then finally, uh, the Hayden Sherman, uh, the evidence remains, is kind of. Batman looking back at kind of like his life and his career as Batman, like, you know, d how has it all fit together and how, you know, basically it's the evidence. It's all about the evidence of his life. And it's really an interesting piece, both visually and story-wise. It's, it's much more visual, but I think it's one of those where when you get to the end, you're like, that was really intriguing. So Sherman really did a nice job on that one. So uh, that one's definitely, definitely worth checking out. I mean, for me, buying it for the Kelly Jones artwork is a win. The fact that all the other stories are really good is, is just a great bonus. So this, as long as, uh, you know, I'll follow this until the end of uh, the, the Tim Seeley, Kelly Jones for sure. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's well worth picking up. It was, it was well worth uh, all those stories. Uh, next up, we have Spectrograph number two, written by James Tinian IV, with artwork by Christian Ward. 
so um, what it is is Janie, the real estate agent, has left her baby at home alone because she needed to go sell this house because she's broke and she needs to, you know, make enough money to for the baby and stuff. And so um, when she gets there, Vesper is kind of the uh, the person that she deals with for the um, uh, the the Thantos group. And so what it is, is this house is really built as, is, is built as a cage to catch ghosts or to keep ghosts within it. So now what has happened is at the end of the first issue, they get trapped. So now they're trapped inside this ghost house and they can't get out. They have to find the key to, to be able to get out. And then, so they, they discover ghosts in there and it's, kind of messed up it is really just it's a haunted house story it's really that simple but with really interesting twists and turns and uh, uh like i said on the surface it's a simple uh haunted house story but i like how tinian is like layering all these other things on top of it to make it a little bit more exciting than just a a haunted house story uh so i like that and of course christian ward's artwork's amazing uh, he recently did that Batman uh, Black Label series. It, it's just a really gorgeous book, and it really is a creepy story. This one really, the second issue really amps up the, the creepiness of it. Uh, and it's it's still well worth checking out. I, I really do like this book, and another win for distillery. Uh, next up, we have Animal Pound, number four, written by Tom King, with artwork by Peter Gross. Now, once again, this is a, this is a take on the Animal Farm story. Um, and so what it is, is, uh, in the last issue, a little bit of a spoiler here, but Piggy has killed one of the rabbits because Piggy's like, we are animals and we need to become, we need to become animals again. So that's what is, so Piggy's running the show cause he's been elected. So now the question comes down to the cats and the rabbits. Are they able to kick Piggy out of office? And what do the other dogs kind of think of what Piggy has kind of led them to? So there's a lot of, it's a very subtle issue in some respects. There's a lot going on. It's kind of that underneath layer where uh, it's it's really interesting how King is telling this story and how he's layering things that are in that basic animal farm story, you know, like, like you know, one is better than the other your class is not as good but there's kind of so much more he's putting more kind of character into this with like piggy and the cats and all this stuff and it's really really quite amazing what he's doing here with that basic structure of the animal farm story and then of course you have peter gross's artwork which is just gorgeous and the fact that he's able to draw these animals and give them so much life and and vibrancy and and facial expressions is really really amazing so that one i'm really enjoying this and like i said great story fantastic art it continues to be a must buy and finally this week we have godzilla king of the monsters number one facsimile edition written by doug munch uh with artwork by herb trempy and jim mooney now um normally uh, sometimes i pick up the facsimile edition sometimes i don't now marvel is reprinting the entire 24 issue run I think it's 24. It's either 24 or 25. Uh, in a hardcover that's coming out, uh, I think this month or next month. And uh, normally, you know, I am I've I've pre-ordered that at my local comic shop. Uh, but the 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 thing about these facsimile editions is the ads. Um, you know, it's really interesting going back. Uh, Munch, you know, the the interesting thing he wrote Godzilla is a monster. He's just a monster. He's on a rampage. What was interesting is because it was Marvel Comics, he put Marvel characters into the book. So in the first issue, you see Shield, Nick Fury, and stuff, and so they're battling Godzilla. And you know the story's not particularly brilliant by any stretch of the imagination. It's pretty basic. You know, uh, our, you know Shield versus Godzilla. Godzilla destroys stuff, and they got to figure out, hey, how do we get rid of this guy? That's pretty much just messing messing crap up in our town uh that's the basic story it's not really deep or anything uh you know trimpy is not you know he was never the flashiest uh artist but he was a good solid artist he he actually draws a pretty decent godzilla kind of looks like a dinosaur a few times but it's godzilla it's fun uh he he uh once again, it's not fancy, but most people do remember Trimpy. I mean, he obviously drew the first Wolverine. Uh, he drew G.I. Joe forever. He's just a good, solid artist. He's not, like I said, not flashy, 
but he gets the job done. And uh, I believe it was probably Jim Mooney did the inks on it. Uh, but it's a fun little book. Uh, like I said, I, for me, it was kind of worth picking up for the ads. Uh, they're pretty wild. Uh, you know, you could, you could earn $10 a week selling newspapers and, and there's a, there's a like Arnold Schwarzenegger type workout, you know, book you can order. Those are always fun. Of course, sadly you can't order them anymore, but it's still fun to see those ads. And, uh, I especially like the, uh, Spider-Man hostess Twinkie ad, uh, that is in there with Madam Web of all things. How ironic with that terrible film. Um, but you know, these are fun little books and, and once again, it's just, they're a blast to see the period. Cause this came out, I believe in 77. Uh, and, uh, so it's really neat to see that period in comics with like the ads and things like that. Uh, so I think it's worth checking out. If you're a Godzilla fan, it's fun. It gives you a taste of what the book's like. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and yeah, they're, they're just, they're a blast. And I really like that, that they're doing these things because it is a, a peek into the past that you don't get to see when they do regular reprints. Cause when they do the reprints, you don't see the ads and stuff. So that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. As always, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, Long Beach, California. Ryan Skinner runs a great store. Uh, there's Annie. There's Wendy. Uh, Derek runs their socials. Uh, so check out their... Uh, the, you can go to their website. Uh, he always posts um, the... Uh, uh, incentive covers uh he puts them up on the website so you can buy them uh you can get them in the store too uh he offers uh discounts on trades and graphic novels every day they have a nice uh, annie rents her manga selection it's really expanded out uh he's he's really expanded the, like the all ages section which is really great uh, it's a really solid comic shop, uh, and he also has a pull box service, so you can pre-order your books so you don't miss them, and uh, then that way they'll be there when you come, and as always, whether it's my shop or your shop, make sure you pick up your books on a timely basis. Uh, comic book stores are the backbone of the industry. They have to pay for the, the product before you get it. So it's really important that you pick up your, uh, your material or, you know, your comics and stuff on, on a regular basis. So they're not left in the lurch. Uh, so definitely support your local comic shop. Uh, and as always, we end our show with be kind, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. Uh, I know times are tough. It seems like the world's upside down, crazy. Uh, but, uh, just, you know, being kind to yourself and being kind to others is really important. You know, it's really simple. Holding the door open, acknowledging people's existence, but also, you know, really take care of yourself. Um, you know, make sure, you know, you just eat well, you know, get enough sleep, uh, and just mentally, you know, just take care of yourself. And that's, you know, one of the things I love about reading comics is, you know, for that little time, it does take you to another place. And that's what I love about comics is, you know, with the story and the artwork, you're able to kind of forget about the world for a few minutes. And sometimes, you know, just taking a few minutes for yourself is really important. So uh, be kind to others and be kind to yourself. And as always, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great subscribers lately. Thank you for, for joining. And uh, please please share the videos. Uh, that, that would be great. Uh, now, next week is uh, uh, the 4th of July is on Thursday. I don't know how that's going to affect uh, the new books coming in. It shouldn't. Uh, I, you know, we'll kind of see, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I'm able to record the video before, uh, the bombs bursting in air, you know, goes off, uh, and, uh, you know, where I can't, you can't even hear me over the explosions going off around the house. Uh, but anyways, we'll see, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get that all sussed out. Uh, but as always take care of yourselves and, uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, this is Steve from popculturemaven.com signing off. Have a good week. We'll see you again next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.